Okay, guys. Teching 101 here with the discovery of the freaking millennium, all right? So earlier today, I had to go shopping at the grocery store. I'm doing a video on smiles today, artificial devil fruits, so I'm like, I gotta get me some fruits, right? So I go to the grocery store, just an ordinary grocery store. I get myself an apple and a pineapple and the bananas and the lime and the lemon and whatever the hell this is. This is, this is an apple pear. Seems kind of like a sin against nature, but all right, apple pear, fine. But then, right here in the grocery store, next to the coconuts, I find this. Do you know what this is? This is a dragon fruit. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, wait, we're selling the dragon, dragon, devil fruit, like, in a grocery store. And there was more than one of them. Like, holy crap. And I got this, and I went to the front of the store, and I asked a sales associate, like, what is this, seriously? And she's like, it's a dragon fruit. I'm like, no kidding. So, I bought this. And there was only, like, four left, so that makes sense, right? So... I have attained the power of the dragon dragon know me. Teching is a dragon now. Not right now, because I'm not going to turn into a dragon in the middle of my room. I don't want my room to be destroyed. But as soon as this video is over, I am going to take a bite out of this, turn into a majestic Shenron Chinese dragon, and then I'd fly off into the sunset. And I'll create uh, my dragonic castle somewhere in the world where no one will bother me. I Greenland. I'll build it in the middle of Greenland. Dragonic castle. And uh, you guys can come visit and be my dukes if, if you were to be so inclined. I'll, I'll keep you updated on that. All right. But, uh, yeah, that's for later. For right now, we're going to be talking about artificial fruits, uh, smiles particularly. Keep in mind, not every single artificial fruit is considered a smile, because Momonosuke's fruit, the one that Vegapunk created, I believe, was created with a completely different process than the way Caesar mass-produces his fruits. And Vegapunk still considered that one a failure, which is why he abandoned the project. You know, Vegapunk is like, alright, well, I'm, I'm already pretty good at figuring out what devil fruits are. Like, he discovered the the true nature of them is what Oda refers to it as. Uh, he figured out some way to combine devil fruits into objects, you know, like the gun lasso or uh, uh, Spondum Sword Funk Freed. So I guess the next natural step to that is Vegapunk thought, you know what? I'm going to try to create my own devil fruit from scratch. And he did, and it resulted in the dragon fruit that Momonosuke ate, which he could still uh, consider a failure for some reason. I mean, maybe because uh, Vegapunk was trying to create a fruit that would, like, rival Kaido. Maybe that's what he was trying to do. Like, I'm going to create a mythical zone that can actually turn you into a legit dragon, not just, like, a cute little dragon. And he figured, you know, oh, well, that's that. I, maybe there's a roadblock or something he hits. There's some reason he abandoned the project. Maybe Vegapunk got to the point where it's like, we can't be playing God! Or, I think the smarter move here, and I talked about this earlier, I did a Devil Fruit video, video back in December, I talked about this, like, you gotta be careful if you're just gonna create these off of an assembly line. Like, if Vegapunk really did crack the code on this, and he can create any sort of mythical zone, or he could reproduce any Logia that he wanted to indefinitely, and you could have multiple Logias at once, like, think about how that would upset the world. The world government would want that technology, they would want the fruits. Like, yes, please give us 100 Gura Gura Nomis, you know, so we can distribute them to all of our Vice Admirals, or can you get a Goro Goro Nomi over here, you know, for, for Admirals? Admiral John Giant, Vice Admiral John Giant, so he can launch electrical punches, you know? Like, maybe Vegapunk realized, because I think Vegapunk is not, like, completely subservient to the world government. He works for them, but I think he also has ties to the Revolutionary Army, um, and he's not, like, on board with everything they do. So maybe he would have considered, oh, oh yeah, that, that Devil Fruit project I was working on, yeah, that was a failure, guys. I made one, and it didn't work out. You, you don't want that. It's not viable. And so maybe he lied to the world government or something like that. But then you had Caesar, right? Caesar clown, you know, got an allied with Doflamingo, and then, of course, was allied with Kaido. And Kaido ordered, you know, I want a bunch of these artificial zone fruits. And Caesar started production on that. And Caesar's is more of, like, the dollar store knockoff sort of thing. You know, like, Momonosuke's fruit isn't the most powerful fruit ever, and it doesn't turn you... I mean, he's a legit dragon, but is he really a legit dragon? When I think of dragon, I think of this. You know, not a cutesy little, like, snake. You, you know what I mean? With horns sticking out of his head. But it's still basically a devil fruit. You know, you know, he eats it. He doesn't have a hybrid form from what we can see, and he seems to not be able to control his transformation the same as other zone users are, but he can still transform into the entire animal the dragon. The smiles that we see, it really seems more like a lottery, where you eat the fruit and the animal that you're gonna turn into, it's like 
part of it could appear at really awkward parts of your body, and the head of the animal could appear, like with Hold'em, he has the power of the lion smile, and you'd think like, oh yes, I have the power of the lion fruit! You'd think like you could get really awesome claws, and your face could turn into a lion, you could use their fangs and everything, and you could turn into an actual lion, and you can run super fast. Those are the benefits of the freaking lion fruit. Also, like, cats obviously have better, like, night vision and sight and everything like that. So, like, those are the benefits you'd think the lion fruit would give you. And to be fair, we have yet to see the lion lion fruit, like, normally, like the actual devil fruit variety. But we have seen the smile, and in the case with Hold'em, it didn't work out the way you figured, because he ate it. It, and uh, he really literally got a lion head appearing out of his stomach and the lion head had its own awareness and sentience and it can do things against Hold'em's will and sometimes it seemed to listen to him but other times it just seemed to do its own thing and just growl and snarl whenever it wanted to so that's that's not the benefits you would think all Hold'em got I think Hold'em did get the claws from it but otherwise he just got some whiskers and a long mane you know not what you would figure and then you got the worst one of all which is Dobon's who's the uh, prison warden in Wano and he has the hippo smile and you know you think the hippopotamus hippopotamus is hippopotami whatever the plural of hippo is you know they're pretty dangerous i think they're the number one killer in all of africa don't mess with the hippo okay those things are freaking dangerous you think like oh i could turn into a hippo and i could swim really well or maybe i get like the pokemon ability thick fat or something you, you could stomp out your opposition no dobon the hippo literally appears in full. The entire body of the hippo appears behind him, and his body is actually inside of the hippo's mouth. This guy really got the short straw when he ate the freaking devil fruits, you know? I don't know how they distributed the smiles to the crew. I don't know if they had a choice, like, you know, Kaido or King or Queen called in the headliners, and they're like, all right, here's, uh, like, like uh, going back to Pokemon references, here are three smiles on the table. You can all pick whichever one you want. And then Dobun was like, I want this one. Can you imagine how terrifying that would be, like, you bite into the fruit, and in Dobon's case, and in a lot of the other artificial smiles, they can't change back, alright? Speed is stuck as a sexy centaur, she cannot turn back into her human form. Batman can't, like, retract his wings, and Dobon can't separate his body from this hippo. Like, he eats the fruit like... Mm. OH GOD! And then it's like the hippo just springs out of his waist area and like his legs are still on the ground but you know the, the, the lower half of the hippo's jaw is just covering up his legs and the upper half just appears in front of him and then the entire body of the hippo just just squeezes out of him and he's just like oh god what is this I'm a sin of nature and then like the top of the hippo shuts because it's an actual hippo hippo like it closes its mouth whenever it wants and no one can hear Dobon. So, you know, you get a few of them like that, and it's like, that's, that's, that's not very practical, you know? Like, Dobon was able to make it, like, a sort of thing where he would trap his enemies inside of the hippo, and then just, like, shred them, but still, you gotta be, you gotta really have high hopes to make this power work. Like, how does he even sleep at night? Like, you're stuck constantly in the mouth of this thing. Like, everything, keep this in mind, everything that hippo eats you got to deal with it, like, like, let's say the hippo wants to eat some, uh, I don't know, do hippos, well, they're omnivores, right, so they eat some meat or whatever, that hippo starts eating meat, it's literally chewing the meat while you're inside its mouth, and just like, oh god, you're constantly covered in saliva, like, yeah, that, that, he had to really work hard to have a positive outlook on that, but not all smiles are like that, like, going back to speed, she just turns into a sexy centaur, so she got, she's a horse smile, so, uh, you know, she ate it, and turned into a horse but just from her lower half she doesn't actually have the horse head sticking out of her for back or something you know like some weird like Cronenbergian freak of nature it's just like centaur the cent uh, centauria from monster musume yeah also you consider that I, I would assume because horses like to eat apples I would like to think that the horse smile was in fact an apple hmm Granny Smith apples they're the best oh, the yellow apples are good too the golden delicious I can't have the red ones though they're just horrible <laughs> ah! Oh god! Oh god! What happened to my head? What happened to my head? Oh! Okay. Okay. Let's all just calm down. Um, I appear to be a horse now. That's, um, hmm. Do I have any? Nope. Nope. 
still normal, just happened to have a horse head. <sighs> well, this is going to get some use to, but hey, might as well just finish the apple. That's good. Get in there. Oh, oh there we go. Um, um. Mm. Oh, that's a good friggin' apple. Mm. Now, I would like to say that the ones that are higher ranked in the crew would maybe have the better smiles, but from what we've seen with Dobon, who is a headliner, that doesn't seem to be the case. Hold him as well. So it really does seem to be just like Caesar produces these off an assembly line, or rather, Caesar provides the sad, the raw materials, then then get shipped to Dressrosa, that then get made into the smiles at the factory because of the Tontadas, and then they get shipped off to Wano. Now, of course, all of these facilities have been destroyed there's no more sad and there's no more frac factory at dress rosa so the you know supply of these smiles have been cut off but they just kind of have to make do with what they have um and i guess there's really no way to tell there might be a way to tell like what kind of animal you'll get but not how it's going to mix with you or how you'll be able to use that ability in combat all too well um because in the case with dobon it's like if your opponent gets really close to you for you to like go all hungry hungry hippos like nom 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 on them right in front of them that's one thing but if the opponent just you figure stays at a distance and just launches some you know long range attack at the hippo and just boom you know there's no there's nothing really dobon could do in that in that case to um i guess he could lower the jaw to protect himself but the hippo is just a regular hippo and you feel bad for that hippo that hippo is the one that got the crap beat out of it by luffy and kid you know dobon was the asshole the hippo did nothing wrong you know um yeah so i i figure they do something they take the animal and then they mix it into the fruit in some way. They take out the animal spirit, I guess. And so that animal spirit is still a living thing that you have to coexist with. It's not like you become the bison or you become the giraffe, as in the case with Kaku. It's like you become an animal, but you also have to kind of coexist with that animal if the head manifests. In the case with, like, um, you know, Batman or Speed, the head of that animal doesn't manifest. So I would say they don't have to deal with it. But then again, they are kind of subservient to their animal nature. Like, if you hold an apple out in front of Speed, she, like, you know, has to eat it because she's like, oh, apple, you know, because I'm a freaking horse or whatever, you know? Um, so, let's talk about some other animals that could potentially become smiles that we're going to see later on in Wano. Keep in mind two things. First thing is this. Just because we've seen a devil fruit before in the series does not mean we can see it again as a smile. Case in point, perfect example, I keep going back to speed because, you know, busty centaur, why wouldn't I? Um, but the horse horse fruit was already seen uh, eaten by Pierre, who was Gonfall's trusty steed, you know, the Sky Knight. So we already saw the horse horse actual devil fruit, but then speed has it as well. So there can be duplicates here, and there can even be duplicates with the smiles. I don't see any reason why. If this process is literally just bring in the animal, the horse, and then, I don't know, slather it with sad or something, and then you just pull out its essence, and then give it to the factory, and they make, here's the smile fruit, you'd think that you could just keep mass producing the horse fruit, you know, there'd be nothing stopping you, they're already artificial, they're already mass produced, so you could probably have multiple different horses, and maybe, if we do see other horse zones, maybe they'll have different combinations, you know, like one maybe has regular legs, but they manifest horse hands, they're like, well, this is... This is not useful at all, you know? Uh, could be something like that. I'm sure Oda does not want to repeat himself too much, but it's very possible. The second thing you have to keep in mind is the limitations with other Devil Fruits we've seen, especially with Zones, are we've never seen them, you know, based off aquatic animals. Like The closest thing we've gotten was the Axolotl, the, uh, the Salamander Fruit that Smiley ate, you know, Caesar's pet on Punk Hazard. That was an amphibian, so Axolotls can live underwater and they can also live on land, the Mexican Salamander, but it was not like eating like a, um, like a clownfish zone that turns you into a clownfish. It was like, well, it's useless because Devil Fruit users can't swim. Um, we don't exactly know the limitations with, with smiles, you know, because we haven't really seen uh, an aquatic smile yet, and you could just say, well, they're called devil fruits for a reason, maybe there's, like, you just can't get around that weakness, but we've just never seen that. 
Um, later on, there might be a shark smile, and the person can literally swim. That would be a huge advantage. That would kind of make up, um, you know, the downsides of the fruits. Like, hey, you know, you eat a fruit that's a smile, you don't know what the combination of animal that you're going to get. You eat the bear smile, and the bear could literally just appear out of your neck, and there's a bear living next to you and keeps trying to bite your face off. Um, or, you know, you could have, it, it could be um, immune from the standard devil fruit weaknesses. That could be like, uh, uh, you know, oh, okay, well, that's worth the risk then if you're still able to swim, even if you have the power of a smile. I don't believe we've seen the, uh, you know, we've seen that confirmed one way or another yet. So there could be, in fact, shark smiles or other aquatic animals that could be used in that case. So for that reason, the first animal I put on this list, and I put a bunch of them, some of them were already seen in the anime, like there's all these animals right here, but the first animal I put on here, because I just recently found out that these things are actually really dangerous, and I put, I put a few on here like, oh, those are so cute, there's no way they could be harmful to humans. <laughs> yeah, the first one though, platypus. Yeah, look at that thing right there. Isn't that the most adorable little water-dwelling duck bird thing you've ever seen in your life? I bet it is. Probably makes you remember Phineas and Ferb. Remember Phineas and Ferb? I remember Phineas and Ferb. My favorite episode is the Backyard Beach episode. What about you? I felt bad for Candace. Every single episode, she could never convince her parents that their, you know, her brothers are making like a giant amusement park outside. I just wanted Candace to win one time. Just one time, Candace. Come on. I think if anything, the parents would be more impressed that Phineas and Ferb are doing all this wacky stuff, you know? Uh, anyway, I'm getting off the track here. You know what's dangerous about this? platypus? I didn't even know this up until a few days ago. Platypi have a, uh, like a spur, like a, uh, a talon, a spike coming off of their left heel. And this spike secretes venom, and it's believed this is actually used to court mates. It's not used for defensive capabilities. It's used more to, like, compete with other males. You know, like, so, like, a male walks up to a female platypus and tries to do the courtship or whatever. This other platypus walks up and just, uh, just shanks him. And then he just goes down, and then the other platypus walks on. Jobs like, hey, how you doing? You know, well, you know, yeah. Now, if the venom is injected into a human, um, I've heard that there's no cases of, like, fatalities from a platypus platypus because of this, but the pain is excruciating. It's extremely painful, so platypus smile, I want to see that. I can picture it now. Little short guy walking out like a platypus. He's got the bill and everything, and, you know, the straw hats are looking at him like, oh, that's... It's not very, uh, threatening. And then the platypus does some, like, kung fu dugong shit, where it's able to, like, flip in the air and land on your back and then stab you with this freaking dart thing, this spur it has on its, uh, on its, uh, calf. And then it injects the venom into you, which is like, oh, oh, no. So, yeah, platypus zone. Also, we have some ones that are only seen in the anime at Zoe. Uh, we have the Gifters. One of them had, like, a lobster claw, which is an aquatic animal. Another one, I think, was a sea urchin. One was a bat, but it was different from Batman. So if you're going to take that scene in the anime as canon, which it isn't, but if you were going to, that would mean that there is more than one type of bat smile. There's the bat smile that Batman has that gives him the wings and the ears, and then there's other bat smile that this dude's got that literally creates a bat coming out of his hand. Uh, so there's that there. There's also this scene right here, which just kind of showcases all the various beasts that Kaido has under his employ. We see a hippo here. We see a lion, which we've already seen. Uh, let's see. There's a yak. There's a gorilla. There's a rhino. Oh, a rhino smile. That would be pretty, that would be pretty impressive. Like, even if it's like withhold him and you eat the, the rhino smile and it creates like a, a rhino head just jutting out of your, your uh, chest or something. That's still, I mean, maybe you won't be able to see that well because you got a giant uh, horn stick sticking out, but you could just, like, <clears throat> impale people with that. That's something you could do. Elephant smile. We've already kind of seen that with, uh, Funkfried and with Jack, who has the mammoth fruit, and Zunisha was also an elephant. But, hey, an elephant smile, you know, stomping around, uh, Wano. That, that could work most definitely. Uh, let's see. We got a crocodile. We got a wolf. Is, is that a freaking Komodo dragon? Okay. Okay, okay, they put that on there for a reason. Alright, we got Kaido, who's a dragon, we got Orochi, who is 
you know, might be a dragon. He's a Yamato no Orochi, close enough. Um, we got, uh, X-Drake and Page One, who are both dragons. They're dinosaurs, but they're dragons. So, they threw a Komodo dragon. I'm pretty sure that's what that is right there. We gotta have a Komodo dragon smile. We, like, we have to. Komodo dragons are dangerous because, like, their saliva is, like, filled with, like, the, all this bacteria and stuff. So, if you get bit by a Komodo dragon, kind of the same thing if you get bit by a Gila monster or something. Not good. Um, uh, I don't think it's known to kill you unless you're, like, allergic to it or you go into shock or, you know, or something like that, but very excruciatingly, uh, like, burning kind of pain if you were to get bitten by a, a Gila monster. Komodo dragons are an order of magnitude bigger than Gila monsters, though, so... I don't exactly know what'll happen if you get bit by a Komodo dragon, but I'm gonna assume it's not good, right? But come on, it's a Komodo dragon, we gotta have that. Um, but yeah, all these other animals we see on here, wolf, bison, tiger, lion, oh my. Uh, oh, a moose, a freaking moose. All right, mooses will you up like you do not screw with a mother moose all right they look they like from a distance they look rather uh, uh beautiful and resplendent you know there's here in canada look at the gentle moose just eating some fruit out in the middle of the woods you know from a distance you get close to that thing and that moose will make you regret ever being born i was a big fan of uh has anyone ever read uh, gary paulson's the hatchet or Brian's Winter, or The River, or Brian's Hunt, or all of the stories revolving around Brian uh, Robson, I think his name was from the old... I think everyone's at least read The Hatchet back in, like, you know, middle school or whatever. It's like a staple of, of um, school libraries. But I, I always remember reading that scene in the book where Brian just gets the ever-loving shit stomped out of him by that moose. <laughs> you know, like, and he, it's like, he, oh god! Oh god, and he tries to get back up, and he gets back up, and the moose just, oh, 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 and it's like, okay, okay, <laughs> damn, damn, son. Okay, but yeah, the moose smile, I want to see that, so, I mean, all of these would be cool, but platypus, moose, and Komodo dragon. Possibly crocodile, too, because not that crocodile, this kind of crocodile, you know, the crocodile that's like a giant tank, that kind of crocodile. Um, so here are some other options. These are ones that I threw out there. I specifically looked for animals that um, some are very innocent looking, but then turn out to be very deadly, and others are already kind of, like, most people know about poison dart frogs, right? Pe most people know that in, like, you know, Latin America and South America, you got these frogs. They're really super tiny. They're usually brightly colored, uh, apple somatic coloring so like yellow red you know really or bright blue and um they secrete poison that can even drop an adult if you were to like you know ingest it into yourself you were to drink this kind of poison um and of course this is used like because there's so many things in like the amazon that can kill you you know the frogs had to had to develop a toxin that could fight back against animals trying to eat them right and that's also what the bright coloring is for to warn predators away so i think most people know about that it as well so i put frogs on here like a frog smile you know you maybe get like slippery skin and you're like oozing you know like you you look kind of disgusting like a frog human right but you know, it's like you don't even get close to them because the frog could just walk up and just <laughs> slather this, like, slime all over you that's, like, toxic. And, you know, you wouldn't live for very much longer after that. Um, I remember reading a book once, uh, this was way back in school, about poison dart frogs. And from what I'm remembering correctly, they stated that there's this one type of uh, poison dart frog where... Oh, and the reason why they're called poison dart frogs is because the natives of these lands would literally take the poison and use it to coat their blow darts, and there you go. But I remember reading once, like, a single undiluted drop of this poison could stagger like multiple adults like more than enough to take out multiple adult men so yeah you don't mess with those things um also i think pretty much a lot of people are aware of the dangers of uh fugu or puffer fish you don't mess with the puffer fish right um it's a delicacy and can be prepared quite delicious if you know what you're doing but if you mess this up and you eat the toxic part of the puffer fish you probably won't live for very much longer you'll be very sick and it, it's not good right so a puffer fish of course very small kind of fish in the water but if it gets threatened by a predator or something it can poof out its body and there's all the spikes that secrete the venom so uh puffer fish once again it's a fish it lives underwater but i think you could adapt this to smile even if you don't want to have the puffer fish actually swim you can imagine this maybe you could have like a skinny dude eating the puffer fish smile and he's walking around he's like hey guys what's going on poof 
and he just poofs out. Like, maybe that's, like, a gimmick Oda could do with it. Like, any time that this dude encounters any sort of, like, threat. Like, let's say he's walking down the street, and let's say somebody accidentally drops something. Like, he, somebody drops a vase, and it crashes, and it makes a loud noise right next to him. He's like, ah! And he's, like, he's a scaredy cat, so everything that happens, he freaks out and poofs out. And just kind of like rolls down the street. Um, but you got to be dangerous touching him because, you know, poison, you know, that's a thing. Um, so those are the two main ones. Um, has anyone ever heard of a cassaway? Cassaway. It's a giant bird, very similar to a ostrich. And I don't think I have to explain to you why this thing would be dangerous. Just like an ostrich, uh, it can run really fast. It has a long range. This thing can get taller than you. So uh, don't piss it off. It looks rather dorky from a distance, but this thing can chase you down. It can bite you. Um, you know, ostriches have talons. They're birds. They can slice you with that, you know. So when you see a giant bird that's like over six feet, feet tall you know don't laugh at it don't go up and try to like egg it on so yeah it's a cassaway and the ostrich um oh but no that doesn't i am convinced this is the next evolution trying to like mess with humans trying to like uh an evolutionary adaptation that protect protects the animal against humans but they're also very dangerous i present to you ladies and gentlemen for your smile consideration the slow loris kind of an interesting name um the slow loris is a mammal that probably has the cutest damn eyes that you've ever seen in your life like look at these things like oh my god they're just so cute i think that's that's why i think they're an evolutionary adaptation like humans don't seem to you know go after and kill a lot of the animals that are super freaky cute I mean, like, rabbits and things we do. But, you know, it's like you have a better chance of surviving. So it's like these animals are going to ad adapt themselves to being the cutest things ever. So humans can just look at them. And, you know, the humans, even the hunters that are going after them are like, Oh, they look so cute. I don't want to take them out anymore. Like, that's their, that's their adaptation. But no, these things are unique. Uh, one of the very few mammals that actually have a, uh, a venomous bite. And what happens is this. This is actually really cool. The venom is not produced inside of their mouth. Well, not entirely. There's a gland that exists outside of their bodies that they lick. And when the substance secreted from the gland mixes with their saliva, it creates the toxin. So they'll literally lick themselves and then they have poison in their mouths. Of course, they're unaffected from it, you know, and then they can bite somebody. And these have been known to kill humans. Um, it depends on, because whatever they eat, whatever that goes into their body depends on how, like, the composition of the, the, the gland, what it secretes and combines with the saliva and makes the venom. So, uh, it depends on what they eat. But, yeah, if they eat certain things and then lick themselves and then bite a human, that, and then there's no medical treatment, that can actually kill a human. So, I present to you the slow loris. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting other kinds of smiles that do not look, like, outwardly threatening. And it's kind of funny that the ones that are, like, the apex predators so far, like, Hold'em was the lion, the king of the beasts. You know, we thought he was going to be somebody like, oh, the lion smile. But then Luffy took him out really no problem. Uh, speed is a horse, not really somebody I think is something I think of when I think of an apex predator. Uh, still, you don't want to mess with a horse, um, you know, and... And also you had uh, the hippo who turned out to be kind of a joke, you know, so it would be funny if the more dangerous smiles ended out being like really innocent looking, you know, y y humans like platypuses or the slow loris or the puffer fish like on the surface don't look that dangerous. But then the real danger comes from the poisons and the venom that they can create. Um, that wouldn't be too much of an issue for Luffy because he has such a high poison tolerance because of what happened at Dr uh, not Dressrosa, what happened at Impel Down. Uh, with uh, Magellan and everything, Luffy can still be affected by poisons, especially with that, like, the giant stonefish if he eats enough of it. So if uh, Luffy were to fight against the puffer fish or the slow loris smile, and if they bit him enough times or poked him enough times with the puffer fish's spikes or something, like, enough poison gets into Luffy, it is going to affect him. But if it's just, like, one shot or anything, because a perfect example of this is when Luffy fought Yozo at Fishman Island, he was the blue ring octopus, and the blue ring octopus something else that is extremely uh, poisonous and dangerous to humans. Um, Luffy got attacked by that and got, you know, pricked by the poison. Didn't seem to affect him all that much. So, 
even if Luffy got, you know, stabbed with the platypus's, like, venomous dart or something, and the poison was even more potent because it's a smile, it's a human, it's even bigger, uh, I don't think it would affect him too bad, or the Komodo dragon, but hey, I want to see that Komodo dragon smile, you know? Yeah, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and now I'm going to enjoy my dragon fruit. Um, how do I... I'm assuming I'm supposed to peel this, because it's... <laughs> Alright, well, that didn't really work. Um, okay. Um, I'm assuming a knife would probably make this process a lot easier, but... Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. 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 This does not look appetizing at all, but... I'm ready to be a dragon. For dragon kind! It has a lot of seeds in it. And it really has no flavor, but... Dragon powers on! Did it, did it work? Did it work? Am I a dragon? Am I a dragon? Rawr! 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 Well, that's just false advertising right there. Can't say I'm upset, though. Hippity hop. What am I going to do with the rest of these fruits now? <laughs> I have an entire pineapple, an orange. I bit into the apple. I have the pear, the apple pear, lime, a lemon, the banana. I like bananas. I'll eat the bananas. I've never tried an apple pear before. I didn't even know that. I thought this was a pear. They were out of pears, and I had to get this instead. It's not bad. Basically just tastes like a really sweet apple.